May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, God, our rock and our salvation. And again, my prayer is this, that you will speak to us, either through me or in spite of me, but that we will hear the words of God speaking into our hearts, into our minds, into our inner depths, so that you will be glorified. Amen. During the morning services, we are busy going through the parables of Jesus. And this afternoon, I would like to concentrate on the parable of the mustard seed. Jesus never sees to surprise. When he tells stories, the stories are remembered by the hearers. It were such striking stories that it was adamant that, that people could, that they just couldn't forget the stories. It was so good. So if we read these stories from where we are, uh, well, it sort of makes sense. But once we try and put ourselves in the shoes of those who heard it for the first time, it's striking, it's surprising, it's funny, it's good. You just want to hear more. No wonder that the listeners uh, of Jesus had followed him all wherever he went, and they just wanted to hear more of these exciting stories not only exciting, but it changed lives. In Matthew 13, we find Jesus where there's a change in his whole ministry. Matthew indicated that change by saying that Jesus uh, went out and he started, or he, 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 he was busy with parables from then onward. So out of the synagogues he went and into the streets, into the open spaces, out of the synagogue with its theological discussions and into the, the place where the people were with stories, beautiful stories. And he started the story of the sower. And the last time uh, I preached, we, we, we looked at that beautiful story of the sower that was actually really a bad farmer. No sower, no farmer in his, 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 his uh, mind would go scattering seeds all over the place. It was actually a funny story. And then Jesus told them why he's telling parables and he explained the whole parable to them. And then he told two other parables in the same, in the same way. For us, well, we read the parable of the mustard seed and we know sort of what a mustard seed must look like. It's very tiny. He also told the parable of the yeast, the leaven. For us, well, we know what it means. But for the people listening to Jesus, it was really funny. It was strange. It's not something you hear every day. It was big and it was small. And Jesus juggled as it as it's a be these concepts of words and, and, and meanings. And it touched their hearts. The parable of the mustard seed is something to behold. He told the parable, and the, uh, uh, Matthew tells us, the kingdom of heaven, he said, is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed it in his field. It is the smallest of all the seed, 
But when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree. That everybody knew. The snack in this story was that somebody actually took mustard seed and sowed it. No one would do that. That was wheat. Uh, these, these mustard seeds and the plants and the shrubs were wheat. People, people just ripped them out. You don't sow these things. They grow wild everywhere, anywhere, in rain and hail and drought and everywhere. You get these mustard seed growing and anyone who's a, everyone who's anyone just wants to take it out of their gardens. But Jesus told a story about a man sowing it. Already, they had to listen. It was an interesting story. It was a story that Jesus told to a specific crowd of people. And he wanted to tell them something about the kingdom of heaven, something about the there and then, beginning with the here and now. And Jesus told the stories about the kingdom of heaven. He didn't use a theological language. He didn't use Pharisee language or language that the priest would use. But he took this little grain and he said to them, the kingdom of heaven is like this. And then he tells the story of somebody sowing it. It's fruitful. It is just boisterous. What is Jesus? What, what does Jesus want to tell us with this story? Three things. The first, he's telling us about things that are small. He talks about smallness. He talks to people who feel small. The people standing in front of him were people that were, uh, they lived in this whole world of bigness, of, of the Roman uh, Empire, people who are longing just to get out of this smallness, out of this trap that they were in. And they felt helpless. We know in the time of Jesus, it was a Roman Empire, it was, it was a time of suppressing uh, their political as aspirations, and they felt small. They felt small in the religious sense because there was this lot of of laws pushing on them. They were pushed down, small people. What can the kingdom of heaven bring to us? We're nothing. Talks about the kingdom. The people standing in front of him are just common people like you and me. They're just people trying to make a living every day any way that they can poor, not used to luxuries in life, small people. The problem of small people is that the smallness went into their minds and into their hearts and into their whole way of living, smallness. The kind of living that says we cannot. We cannot. We cannot overcome. We cannot make a difference. Who are we? On the one hand, everybody wants to be big. Everyone wants to be recognized. Everyone wants the dignity of just to fill some shoes and to be recognized as someone who had a life worth living. But in front of him were the disciples, people who had the task of changing this world into the kingdom of God. The best you could come up with was a mustard seed. 
and they acknowledge their smallness, their nothingness. And it is as if he had sympathy and said, yes, I know, now you are small, now you are nothing. But in the kingdom of heaven, nothingness is no, never nothing. God works with small beginnings. The beginning of, of, of the church was, was nothing. It was so small, so tiny, so nothing. The people in front of them, the disciples, were just, well, mustard seed. Mustard seed, nothing more. Yes, when he spoke about mustard seed, maybe they nod their heads and say, yeah, that's me. Maybe when we hear this gospel this afternoon, you say, yeah, it's me. You look at your new beginning and you say, yes, that's me. You look at yourself and look back on the week that passed and you say, well, that's me, small. I didn't make a difference. There was nothing big happening. There was nothing major happening. I'm just a small little, little part in a, in a big machine. And then the second, Jesus talks about a farmer, a man taking these Small seedlings. And he sows it everywhere. He scatters it everywhere. No one in their right mind sows wheat seed. Yet he's talking about a farmer. And he talks about the same farmer as he spoke about earlier in that chapter, earlier in his stories, the farmer that we say is God. Well, nobody in his right mind does something like that. The Jewish Mishnah forbids sowing them because they are so useless. They are annoying weeds. But Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed sown into the field. And no one sows such weed unless, of course, if you are God. And Jesus says, well, my father, in this kingdom, the mustard seed, that's you. And God is sowing this mustard seed all over the world. And he hasn't stopped doing that. You and I. What a strange farmer. And then he comes to the secret. You see the secret of the mustard seed. And Jesus wanted to, to focus on that. He wanted them to, to get it. The, 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 the secret of the mustard seed is not in its size. It's not in the hand of the sower even. The secret is in the mustard seed itself. Because right inside of that very tiny little seed, there's life. There's the possibility of a tree. Isn't that great? In that little seed, there's the possibility of a forest. In that little seed, there's the possibility of birds making nests. There's the possibility of taking over. That's what he wanted to say. In the Old Testament lesson this afternoon, we read the beautiful story after the, uh, the, uh, the people of God returned from captivity and they... They went back to Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is in tatters. It's in ruins. And God's task for them was to rebuild the temple. And oh my goodness, they were just seeds. Mustard seeds. They were scared. They were afraid. They, they had it from all sides. Not only inside, but from the outside. They were told, you're small, you're nothing. 
And then comes the word of the Lord, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. There's the secret. You see, the secret is not in my ability, my looks, my whatever. It is inside God's spirit deposited inside me through the new birth, through the Holy Spirit, the, the power of Christ in you. There is the secret. In the upper room, they were waiting. And Jesus said to them, Jesus had a promise to them, you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit come upon you, you will receive power. Power, not by might, not by power, but by your, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You see, Jesus wanted to tell them, you've got the power to change the world. You don't need to get it. You got it. Through my spirit that I, that I imparted it on you, you've got the power to love. You've got the power to pray. You've got the power to hope. You've got the power to believe. You've got the power to get peace and instill peace. You've got the power to overcome. You've got the power to get through all of this. You've got the power to be all God has created you to be. You've got the power to dream. You've got the power. Can you see? Can you... Can you hear what they heard that day and why it, why it was so powerful in their hearts? They went from there as seed, but seeds that were empowered. They knew, walking away from Jesus that day, that this mustard seed, well, that's possibly me, but inside, I'm a tree. I'm a tree. Not only were they to be the hope of the world, the love of Christ that flows through them to this world, but the implication is also that they had to be fruitful. The seed cannot only stay seed, it grows into this, this, this tree, and the tree gives seed again, and it multiplies they would become hope sowers. They would become love sowers. They would become good news scatterers. They would become peace sowers, scattering peace all over where they go. They scatter peace. They scatter love. They scatter change. They scatter the dream of God to come true. says something to you and me. You and me sitting here this afternoon and you look at yourself, you say, well, who am I? I want you to look inside. The time to say, well, I'm nothing is over. Look inside. Jesus says, I give you my spirit. I give you my spirit. And through that, you've got the power. You've got the power. You'll get through it. Moreover, you will make a change. You will make a change in this world. I want to close with a story. There was once a little man. In fact, he was only approximately five feet tall. Small guy. 
He didn't weigh, weigh a lot, so it was really a, a small guy. And he applied for a job as a lumberjack. You know what's a lumberjack? Chop off trees. So he applied for the job. And the foreman who was doing the interviewing thought he would try to discourage this little fellow. So he gave him an ax. And he pointed out a tree that's about 100 feet tall, a huge one. And he asked him to chop it down. Within minutes, the tree was flat on the ground. And the foreman was amazed. And he asked him where he had learned to chop trees so powerfully. And the little fellow said, well, I worked for a forest products company for a number of years in the Sahara Desert. And the foreman said, but there are no trees to chop in the Sahara Desert. And the little man said, not anymore. God gave you the ax. God gave you the power. Live it.